Okay, this video will be how to create a simple logo image in Photoshop. So the first thing I need is a document. So I'm going to go File, New. Document dialog box opens up. I'm going to go into Web. On the right hand side, I need to set how many pixels I want for the width and height. So I'm going to change it to I'm going to change it to 250 pixels for the width and I'm going to make the height 100 in pixels. Really don't need artboard so I'm going to get rid of that and the resolution needs to be 72. The color mode needs to be RGB and I can decide what kind of background I want to begin with. I could do white, black, transparent and I'm going to start with transparent and I'm going to create. Okay. So here is my document. Now, if I go to the Move tool, I can't really move that image maybe up further. To resolve that, you can always go under the Window menu and get rid of Application Frame. Okay, And what that does, it gives you kind of a floating window, which actually is my preference um, not to have kind of that background. It kind of inhibit, inhibits me. So I've got my document here. And what I'd like to do is go ahead and add some text. So I'll come to my text tool. I will go in and I will click and it gives you some lorem ipsum and you can overwrite that text and maybe I will call this dog lovers. So I'll go D O G space lovers. Okay. Love lovers. Okay. And I'll make that a cap. Actually, maybe I'll make them all caps. Okay, now that I've got that set in here, I'm going to open up my character palette so I have more options for the text. If I go to the T tool, if I come up at the top here, I see this little icon here. And what that does is it launches the character palette. I'm going to get rid of some of these other ones that opened at the same time. Now I can choose what typeface I want, clicking on this little down arrow. And I can choose a typeface. Maybe I'll do Arial Black. I can increase the typeface point size. Okay, this is also a slider. If I hover over the, the small T and the big T, I can actually push it back and forth and it can increase the type. Okay, I can also Go to my move tool and I can move it in the center here. Now some of these other settings are in the character palette are more for paragraphs. This one is for spaces in between the line. This one is for spaces in between actual letters. This is referred to as kerning. This one would be to space all the letters out. So I could click here and I could increase the spacing 10. So it spaced them out a little bit. I would not Go, I would not use uh, the uh, vertical height, horizontal height. It only just stretches the type out of shape. I could come down here and I can make it bolder. I could make it italic. I could make them all caps, which I actually like. There's some other more kind of scientific settings in here. I'm going to go back to my move tool and move that over a little bit more. Okay. I can also come over here and change the color. Um, maybe I'll do more of a brown. When the color picker opens up, you can click anywhere in this color bar, and I think the browns are right in this area. And then I can go to the larger area and click more of a specific brown shade. When you're happy with that, you can say, okay, by the way, down here it says pound in this number. This is the hexadecimal number that refers to this color. And I'm gonna say, okay. Maybe I will decrease the point size just a little bit because I'm pretty tight here on the left here. So maybe I'll say 32 okay. and move that back around. Now, if I want some sort of logo on here, I do have the ability to add a custom shape or you could bring in a shape that maybe you created in Illustrator. But I will go ahead and click on the custom shape. It looks like a little glob here. The rectangle tool may be in the forefront, so look for the tool right below this black arrow. If I click and 
hold my mouse, I can see there's some subsets of this tool and I want custom shapes. Remove this out of the way. If I go up at the top here, I can see that I have a custom shape already set in the shape area. I can change the color of that custom shape for the right away. I'll go back to that brown that I had selected so it sets that color in here. Now what I can do is click this arrow and I can see that I have some custom shapes. Now you may not see all these shapes and I will help you resolve that. I'm gonna close this for right now. If you're not seeing those custom shapes, when Adobe um, revised Photoshop for CC 2020, for whatever reason, they decided to get rid of those custom shapes, but you can bring those back if you go under the window menu and shapes. Okay, opens up this shape palette, and then you could go to this flyout menu and you could add these legacy shapes and more. Since I've already done that, I'm not going to do that again. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. And if I click here again and look at the shapes that I have available to me, I'm just going to pick a paw. I'm going to grab this one. When it's selected, I can go into my document and I can click and pull out that shape. Now, I want to make sure that I don't skew it, so I'm going to hold my shift key so it's not skewed. Again, I could go to my move tool. I could move that shape around. Let me make sure I'm on the right layer on this layer here. <laughs> it's a cat print and I say dogs. Okay. It's not letting me move it around. So I've got a setting in here. I'm going to get rid of auto select. I actually don't like that setting. And now I can come in here and move it around. Again, maybe if you're having the same problem, get rid of auto select here and maybe I'll move the dog lover's text down. I used my arrow keys on my keyboard board to do that. Um, now I'm going to save it for the web and notice this checkerboard. This is telling me that I have a transparency. Remember when I initially set up this file, I had the background as transparent. I could add a background color if I wanted to or leave this as transparent. I'll go ahead and just add a background color just for demonstration purposes. So I want to add a layer. Now, if you look in your layer palette, which I have right here, I can come down here to the icon next to the garbage can, which will allow me to add a layer. Photoshop will add a layer above the one you had selected, meaning I had this layer selected and it added it above. Now, if I fill this layer with color, it's actually going to hide my text. I'll go ahead and fill it and I'll show you how you can change that. And to fill it with color, what I want to do is come down to the color chip, select the color that I want to fill the background with. I could go all the way to the corner here and select white. Or what I could do is move my cursor outside of this color picker and I can select this brown and perhaps take a lighter shade of the brown for the background. Okay. Again, if you move your cursor out, you get an eyedropper tool and you can select a color within your file. And I'll just select this one and I'll say, okay. Now that color is set right here in my color chip. And what I can do is I can go edit fill and I could fill that background. Okay. And I could fill it with white, which is the default or I could do the foreground color. Now the foreground color is referring to this right here and I could say, okay. Now I want to make sure that my text is above this layer so I can select this layer and just hold my mouse and move it up. As I'm moving, my cursor turns into a fist. That's a visual indicator that I can move that layer and drop it in. Now another option with adding a background color is just another tool in the toolbar. And I'll go ahead and show you that option as well. So I'll click another layer here. I'll hide this one. Turned off the eyeball here. And I'll just pick a random color here. Maybe I'll do a yellow just for demonstration purposes. Yellow, 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 yellow. Okay, and I'll say okay to that. Not really fond of that color, but this is just for demonstration purpose. 
purposes. So last time we went file, fill. This time I'm going to use the paint bucket. The paint bucket is located under the gradient tool, which is right here. I'm going to select that. I can go into that document and spill that color in here. Now, with a lot of the Adobe's, there's multiple ways of doing the same thing. So that's just another option. I'm going to go ahead and delete this layer. So I'm selecting it and I'm hitting my trash can. It's asking me if I really want to do that, and I do. I'll turn the eyeball back on this one, okay, or leave it transparent. I think I'll leave it transparent for now just to show you something. Now I need to save this for the web. So I'm going to go File, Export, Export As. In this dialog box, I can change the setting. If you're on JPEG, as far as the format, it will automatically give you a background color. Now, since I had it as transparent, it's giving me white. JPEGs do not support transparency. So in order to get a transparency, I do need to either select GIF or I need to select PNG. These two file formats, GIF and PNG, support transparency. I'll select PNG. Okay. I can see that checkerboard, which is a visual indicator for transparency. I need to make sure that transparency is selected here. If you're happy with all your settings, which I am, I will export. I'm going to find Art116 to save this file, my name folder, my image folder, and I will rename this file dog lovers logo make sure that you're keeping the extension that's really important and save so a simple logo okay i definitely could have designed this differently meaning i could have gone to this text and i could have made it much smaller so i'm going to select the text here and i will go ahead and move that slider down I'll move that text over here, and I could also move this paw print here. Maybe I'll do everything in the middle here. So if this is your preference, you could do it this way as well. Maybe I'll increase the size of that just a little bit more to kind of fill in that space. I'm gonna just dial 25 in there, okay? I'm gonna move that text over and I'm going to use my arrow keys to kind of tweak it over. Now, if this is your preference as far as design, you definitely could do that. And if you want the color saved, okay, you can do that as well. To export it for the web, you go File, Export, Export As. Okay. It's taking just a minute here. I see a preview right here. Keep in mind, I'm on PNG. I don't really have a transparency because I have a background color. In this case, I could actually select JPEG, okay, because I'm not really wanting a transparency. The file sizes are a little bit smaller with JPEGs. So I could go ahead and export, go to Art116, my name folder, my image folder and I could save this as I'll call it dog lovers logo 2 okay make sure that you keep the extension dot JPEG and save 